In this segment, we're going to talk about attention, and that's going to be our jumping off point to kind of getting into the transformer architecture. So the transformer, the paper that introduced transformers by Ashish Vazwani et al. Uh, was called Attention is All You Need. And so I think that uh, kind of appropriately situates the importance of attention for uh, how these models work and uh, kind of more generally in NLP, how much of a change they made. So attention is going to be a mechanism for accessing information in the context to be able to make predictions. This is kind of the problem that we've been wrestling with as we've looked at feedforward networks, DANs, uh, RNNs, things like that. And here we're going to talk about how attention can impact language modeling and how it can be used there. And we're going to do that via a running example uh, that's going to be kind of cooked up to show you what it can do. So, we're going to consider these fixed length sequences of A's and B's uh, that look like this. And our goal here is to predict the last letter in this sequence. Now, I've constructed these according to the following rule. If it's all A's for the first six characters, then the last one is going to be an A. If there's any B anywhere in the sequence, then the last one's going to be a B. So, the reason that we need something like attention is because it's going to allow us to go arbitrarily far back in the context from where we are trying to make a prediction, and that's going to help us answer this question of basically, is there a B anywhere? So I know I said there would be fixed link sequences, but just as a thought experiment, suppose we were trying to uh, do language modeling over sequences like this. Now, this is the kind of thing that uh, RNN sort of struggle with. Now, it's difficult for these models to, like we said, backpropagate through many layers of computation and learn how to remember things well. And so they, they'll have a tendency to forget information over long periods of time, and we're going to see how attention can fix that. I'll caveat that by saying that, of course, this example is doable. You can actually hand construct weights to do it uh, if you want to uh, give that a shot. Okay, so let me introduce the basic uh, kind of ideas of attention in the context of this example. So uh, our actual sequence that we're going to use is going to look like this. And of course, the kind of true next thing here uh, should be B, right? Because there is a B in the sequence. So uh, we're going to have two concepts that are really important here. One is the notion of keys, which are just going to be the embeddings of the sequence for now. Uh, and we're also going to have a query, which is what we want to find. OK, so in terms of embeddings, we're going to assume the following word embeddings, that A has the embedding 1, 0, and B has the embedding 0, 1. So these are just one hot encodings of these, um, and we're going to call them uh, EI. So for the attention computation, it's going to have a number of steps. The first step is to compute a score for each key, given the query. OK, so what does our sequence look like? Well, if we uh, use that embedding that I listed here, we get vectors that look like this for our four words. Now, the score here is going to be computed by taking the ith key and dotting it with the query. So this representation allows us to basically say, OK, what are things that have high dot product with our query? Let's give those a higher score. And in this case, we're going to set the query equal to zero, 1. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to basically find Bs. 
So that's what the kind of scores here are going to do. And so if we go through and take the dot product, we get the scores 0, 0, 1, and 0, like this. All right. So then let me kind of rewrite this over here for step two, which is going to be to softmax. So we had our sequence A, A, B, A with scores 0, 0, 1, 0. And when we softmax, that gives us the following vector of probabilities if we assume E equals 3. Um, so again, we're exponentiating these things and normalizing them. So when you exponentiate 0, you get 1. When you exponentiate 1, you get 3. And so uh, this, this stuff kind of ultimately adds up to 6. And you get a distribution that looks like this. And then for step 3, we compute output as a weighted sum of the input. And so what this means is that the result is going to be the sum of alpha i times e i from i equals 1 to 4 here. Uh, and we're going to denote these this vector uh, of probabilities as alphas. So basically, this is 1 sixth times uh, 1 0 plus 1 6 times 1 0 plus a half times 0 1 plus a six times 1 0, which ultimately gives us half half. OK, so it feels like we went through actually a whole lot of work to get a uniform kind of split between these two positions, uh, which kind of represent A and B, right? But in reality, if we kind of compare uh, to an average, the sort of average embedding of this would be 3 quarters, 1 quarter, right? If we just sort of averaged over the inputs that we were given. So what the attention has done is it's kind of amplified the b ness of the context here. And we can see that by the fact that the weights assign a kind of higher weight to that, uh, that uh, position here, right? So we were kind of taking a weighted average where the weight is higher here. Now, the reason the weight isn't even higher is because well, 0, when exponentiated, still kind of gives you something, right? It still gives you 1. Uh, so suppose that we actually like really want to make the attention even more peaked. Then what we might want to do is uh, kind of amplify these embeddings more when we do the attention computation. And so we can do that by scaling them up by this matrix WK here, uh, where this is just a diagonal matrix with tens on the diagonal. And so it's just going to multiply all of the values of the keys by 10. So now, if you go through the attention computation again, you're going to get something a little bit more peaked. And I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you to do, but you can kind of convince yourself that it's going to give us the same effect, uh, but something even more extreme. So this uses a formulation of attention called dot product attention, where the interaction between the keys and the query is done, is kind of mediated by the dot product operation. In reality, what we're using here, once we start introducing these matrices, is a form called scaled dot product attention, where you have a matrix that uh, basically forms this bilinear function that computes uh, uh, an inner product between k and q. And what we're going to see is actually the case in attention is we s multiply the keys by a matrix WK, which we saw a kind of teaser for on the previous slide. And we're also going to multiply the, the query Q by a matrix WQ. And uh, this is a kind of form of attention that is going to get used in 
basically all of the standard transformers. There's other mechanisms for attention that were introduced in settings like machine translation. Um, some of these older papers talk about them, um, but we're not really going to use them here. And what we're going to see is that, in fact, there ends up being a third matrix for values, and that's going to be uh, sort of a key part of self-attention. So we'll come back to that later. But for now, what we've seen is that we can take these keys, which are each token in a sentence, and use a query to form a distribution over them, take a weighted sum of them, and then get a uh, kind of output finding the stuff in the sentence that matches the query. That's the end of the segment.